Hello. Welcome back, everybody. Hi, hi, this hi. is episode one of arc three of Better Than Heroes. Woo-hoo. We are back with a brand new storyline, and we have leveled up. Uh, the crew yeah. is level nine today, um, and I'm Rachel Weeks. I play Click, the now level nine Tor Green Fighter. I am Andrew Overdahl. I play the human bard named Flute, a.k.a. the Windrider. Uh, I'm Jordan Dahl, and I play the Moon Boy, a level nine Moon Boy. My name is Aaron Eurus, and I play Kai Hammerstein, the Artificer. And I'm Harlan Kelly. I am the DM of this game. I play everybody else. You're already starting to notice a couple of uh, new things. We are in Arc 3, so we got a brand new layout. Um, and we're going to have some some more come at, rolling out uh, as the the arc continues. There's going to be exciting stuff on the horizon for Arc 3. Uh, and we can't wait to have you guys with us. We're going to jump into the show in just a few minutes. We're playing some 5E Spelljammer-inspired Dungeons & Dragons Ooh. tonight. Uh, our show is brought to you by Big Top Productions. Big Top! Uh, they make this all possible. They help us pay our wonderful crew, including our live soundtrack artist, Jason Wardell. Drink you up. can hear. Pew, pew. Uh, and they he helps us pay Case Drury of Tiger Moon Productions, who is our stream producer. And uh, now we are going to go Boom. into last week's recap. Last time on Better Than Heroes, in the Hellmouth, beneath the world of Garden, negotiations between the crew, their friend Gregory Punch, and the Devil Lord known as the Magistrate quickly failed and gave way to violence. Moonboy discovered that Kai had left his body and was somehow interfacing with the Devil's lair. Gregory Punch and Click fell upon the Magistrate and his summoned Killdeer minions. With the Fiend on Death's door, Windrider offered them a chance to survive if they tore up the devilish contracts for both the Cove and Gregory Punch. The Magistrate agreed and tore up both contracts, but Windrider was cleverly bluffing and combat resumed. With the contract nullified, Gregory Punch's powers faded from him, along with his infernal markings. Nevertheless, Click landed a killing blow on the Magistrate, but not before he sent a message of warning to someone called the Undying Queen. The party attempted to recover Kai, unsure if his consciousness had returned to his body. Click psychically communed with the Magistrate's lair and made contact with this Undying Queen. Threats were exchanged, and the Hellmouth began to collapse. Windrider dealt with the mysterious sender of his notes, and negotiated a contract allowing their escape from the crumbling Hellmouth. When he signed his name, the ink changed magically to read Flute Whim Teaser, and an own unknown hand signed themselves as The Rider. The exit opened up, and the crew escaped not a moment too soon. Gregory Punch regained his old name and decided to leave in search of a new life. Talon hitched a ride along with him. The party stood in a freed cove with Kai's dormant body. Am I dormant? How am I reading this? Can anyone see me? Can anyone hear me? Find out right now on Better Than Heroes. Woo! Woo! Yes, Aaron, I do think you need to reinvent yourself as a cowboy. Oh, we're back. We're back. Okay. Um, oh, you knew it. You knew. <laughs> in, in life. In real life. Jacuse. No, jac- a cowboy would never say jacuse. It's <laughs> like jacuse. Jacuse? We jacuse. Jacuse. Cowboy call them lawyer. Them, my friend, jacuse. And these parts, we call them jacuses. <laughs> 
this time. <laughs> All right, hello. Welcome back, everyone. Welcome to Arc 3. We find our party of adventurers right on the edge of town, uh, the town known by its inhabitants as the Cove, a camouflaged inlet within the earthen clusters which compromise the planet known as Garden. The Cove was once ruled by a lineage of pirates who made a deal with the devil, dooming every lost soul who took residence there to a life of piracy, but now the crew of the golden ship known as the Dinger has defeated both the pirates and the infernal being that oversaw the Cove's imprisonment. You can see Moon Boy, the pale white gnomish creature who has magical connection with the moon, leading the crew with his illuminated flying shoes and guiding the path in front of them as, the, as they approach the town. With him is the loudly dressed, swashbuckling bard flute whim teaser, who has also nicknamed himself the Wind Rider. There is a quick purple shimmer around his face from the Ioun stone that has replaced one of his eyes. And right behind him is Click, the mantis humanoid with four arms, feathery antenna, and a mechanical translator strapped over her pincered mouth. With her large hooked strapped, uh, with her large hooked shaped blade strapped across her back, she has no trouble carrying the fourth member of the party, the arcane construct Kai, whose metal body lies dormant after he separated his consciousness from his corporal form to interface with the infernal machine that controlled the fiend's lair. And as the party crests the town, they see the inhabitants of this lush spaceport have gathered, lighting the night with torches all around. There is a commotion as a penguin person named Whipper, the de facto speaker for the people of this town, pushes her way to the front and looks at you all. Sadness in her, there is sadness and worry in her eyes as she sees Kai's limp form and looks to you all, hopeful but worried. And right at that moment, there is a blue surge of light from Kai's body. Aaron, Kai, you come back to consciousness with your friends and the whole town looking right at you. What do you do? I, light fills my eyes and I sort of come online and start, there's a sudden babbling coming out of my mouth. Like it's a combination of modem noises and multiple <laughs> languages at the same time saying, strange arcane equations and like parts of recipes and stuff <laughs> just kind of pouring out of my mouth before I realize what's happening I'm like oh hello everyone are we all alive is everyone all right <laughs> hello are you uh, all right I'm fine hello <laughs> you were did we do it I think I think we did it. You were for sure. We thought you were dead, Kai. We thought you were oh, dead. Oh, I'm sorry. No, I wasn't dead. I was merely interfacing with the mechanical mainframe of that uh, infernal lair. Foul well, stuff. But well, I did some damage in there. Glad you I met a somewhere. shadow person. I went oh. to a shadowy library. I uh, severed some planar connections of various kinds. It was uh, quite an excursion, but... Whipper waves her hand to sit you and goes, no, I, Yes, 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 but... Uh, are we free? Is the, is the cult free? Did you all defeat the devil? Oh. Yes, he, he ripped oh, up yeah. the contract. So... Yes. Did you hear some rough murmuring from the town? Like, so... For sure, we're... We're free. Yes, I mean... If there was, you know, there was a devil who was holding a contract, and he's dead now, so... The devil! The whole, yes. the, the magistrate, is he's dead? You all, you all killed him? The magistrate. He's right. dead, and he ripped the up the contract. Both. Double whammy. Oh, Mazel Tov. Whipper looks around and she goes, We're free! And the whole town is like, Wah! And just like, yells together, and you, you... Um, there's like a spray as someone like takes a wooden hammer and pops a cork of a barrel that just kind of like sprays out next to you and uh, there's a, a few folks who have like all of a sudden have musical instruments that are like singing and playing and um, you all are kind of like swept up in your crew by different members of this town uh, like coming over to you and like asking you questions and, and handing you food and drinks and they just 
the, the whole town has come alive here um, in excitement. They're like the, the crowd is like very loud. You're kind of like separated in your own little spaces as people are uh, like coming up to you all and, and asking you about it. So um, if anybody has a way that they are kind of uh, would begin celebrating with the, this town, I would love to hear it from your character. Yeah, the uh, the wind wind rider was already very into this pirate cove from the moment that he saw it, and now to be see the celebration and to along with his companions be the the cause of it. Yeah, he's definitely like he's so he's soaking it up for sure. <laughs> Good. Right, he's like telling a story for like his like minor contributions. Like, right, and I made him rip up the contract. Uh, there, there's a bunch of like kids there with like little uh, wooden weapons who are like, "You forced a devil to rip up an infernal contract. That's amazing." They all say, "That was that. That's amazing." <laughs> wow, such vocabulary. Uh, Moon, Moon Boy chimes in and he's like, "That's nothing. One time, he sank." Uh, not one, but two ships, and oh. he saved a bunch of fish people, and they called him the Sinker. Oh! The kids, like, look around, and they're like, the Sinker? And they, like, look no, excited. Don't no, don't start! No, don't no, chant right. it, please! No, no they did. No, that's... They I gave that. It. I gave that name away. Um, like any oh, good... Wait, that's right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's right. I wouldn't know any of that. That is a good question. Um... Just before the the end of this scene, the um, like any good pack of young kids, as soon as you tell them not to do something, they're all like the sinker, and they all like start sword fighting with each other with these like little wooden swords. Oh, <laughs> cute! You have another like religion the... on your hands, <laughs> Wind Rider. The name will live on whether you like it or not. <laughs> Yeah, you gave it away, but now you have it back again. Congratulations. <laughs> I, I seem to remember I gave away something, too. But can I remember what it was? Um, yes, you, you can still remember that your name from a past life, uh, when you were from a whole nother sphere of planets and, and things, uh, a reality that was spun away at some point, then you don't have a memory of why, but you do know that you are in that past life or named Cyril Ethic, and you can remember that name, even though at in order to enter the Hellmouth, you were required to give something away, and you gave away that name, and uh, Flute gave away the Sinker, this, the nickname that the, this cult of fish people gave him. Um, you all are still able to remember these things. Kai begins um, to rejoice as he realizes that he can remember the recipe that he gave away for Crag Hungus, the traditional <laughs> Goliath battle wedding loaf. <laughs> Craig, Are there any Goliaths here who want to be married? Uh, <laughs> Ready your weapons! You see, uh, as you yell that, this, like, uh, big... Um, just like pale white uh, Goliath walks from kind of like stands up and he's like I would like to meet a Goliath someday and and be wed oh I want that for you thank you I I also you know I have dreams of settling down and maybe starting my own business oh okay what kind of business would you want to start um he looks at you and he's like, a toy shop. I want to make little toys for children. It seems very Fantastic. fun. Fantastic. Yes. Kai, Kai, ask, ask, ask what my name is. What's your name? Um, he kind of looks at you sheepishly. He's like, uh, Beetleby? Uh, and he just like looks around and just like looks really nervous as the, like the heroes of this town that like people are kind of like lined up and around are now looking at him. He's like, and they're like, you see a couple of folks like looking at him, like glaring, not glaring at him, but just being like, oh my gosh. Um, and looking at Beetleby. <laughs> Hooray like, for uh... Beetleby! <laughs> and the whole, the whole like, crew is absolutely just like, Beetleby! And he like, he looks very <laughs> de like embarrassed. He's yeah. single! Uh, I was gonna say, Click, uh, Click will raise the flute given to her by goat <laughs> to her fashioned whistle blowing 
a hole on her translator. Yes. Yeah, there's a special apparatus for that. That's right. Because because uh, Kreens do not have uh, the utensils to operate a whistle, <laughs> Kai had one installed. Wait, did you just so refer she... to lips as a utensil? Yeah. <laughs> yep. I did. Sorry. I liked it a lot. Harlan. No, it uh, makes sense. I'm not criticizing. <laughs> I just didn't want to blow past that. I love that. For whistling, whispering, and telling grandma you love her, and that's it. Uh, <laughs> she, Click will will raise the the whistle goat. Uh, their Goliath bosun gave her to her hole and uh, give it a whistle. Okay. Um, let's have you roll a performance check here. I don't know if you've let's, ever oh, had yeah. the fighter in the party roll a performance check. I don't check, know if Click's ever performed. So we're sure going to find out right now uh, how you do, do with this. Come on, baby. Oh, yeah, that's a hot nine. A hot nine. Okay, well, since it's not a cold nine, um, you, you blow it out and it's just like one large tone. And the Goliath looks at you confused, but can just read from you that it was meaningful and, and Beetleby's like thank you he says and pats you on the back that was beautiful and a couple of other people are like asking him now more about the toys that he wants to make and he's like well you know it's, no one's ever asked before but and he's like starting to go into detail about them okay so the the intention was to get goat's attention and I, I suppose that was unsuccessful with a nine <laughs> yeah with a nine the crowd's a little too loud so you yeah. would have to go and, and directly mm. snag this uh, member we'll who, have to... you don't see any members of your crew amongst this crowd but you know that your ship is docked at the port so it makes sense that they mm. might be on there uh, the moon boy is getting into this party. He is doing kind of a dance, shifting between dances like you would see the Charlie Brown characters do in the <laughs> Christmas special. Uh, and like dancing with probably the, the other children and the youths of the, uh, of the cove. And being very guarded of his hat, though. Like when the kids get a little close, he's like, Better watch it. Better watch it. <laughs> yes. Hey, little thieves. Um, That's right. A kid tried to steal his hat. It's not. Kid, it's not unwarranted. Did, it's not unwarranted. Um, in, in fact, it got uh, a hot fifty feet away from me with that thing. Would you? Uh, would you roll a perception check? And um, while you're doing that, I want to roll back to Click real quick because I almost forgot something. Uh, Click, could you roll a Constitution saving throw? Oh, <laughs> yeah. No. Great. Uh, that is a twenty-one. I believe. Okay. Um, in this revelry, you feel a twinge of pain along your side, and this infernal wound that you were stabbed by the devil that you fought before his tail. Um, and it doesn't seem to be growing on you, but it definitely seems to, the wound seems to remain, and you just feel that weakness is not something that is going to be naturally healed, um, as you have mm. felt this uh, kind of like draining of your body before when you were latched onto by a... Uh, a space lamprey um so you know that this wound is going to continue to be a problem maybe grow if not weaken you um mm. if you don't tend to it um yeah are you all right click, click winces in pain i i i i don't sure reveal some gaping holes from a Whoa. devil stinger in the back of her uh, oh, body. So there's black ichor pouring from the from the holes in her carapace, and uh, um, doesn't look good. Doesn't look good. Can I call Whipper over and uh, be like, Whipper, click click here took some a bit of nasty damage on there. Is there anyone here who might be able to take a look at her? Oh yeah, show me the wound, you know. And if she if she looks at it, she like uh, spits out a small fish, like immediately that is like a little bit of she's just like oh no oh, goodness and she like grabs the fish and puts it back in her mouth and she's like oh my god oh is that the doctor I, oh, <laughs> what a hilarious fear reaction I do that yeah. too <laughs> um we'll we'll get back to that moment in a tiny second um Jordan did you roll a perception check for Moonboy I sure did what you get and I rolled a natural 20 look at you oh. um Perception check of 28 for the moon boy. You see inside of the the crowd that of, of kids that seem to be a more rough and tumble crowd. They're the one listening to um, you and Windbrider tell stories earlier, but 
she was not in that crowd before, but she definitely is now. She has a, a wooden sword, and you see the little girl who tried to steal your hat before. She has kind of like dirty blonde hair that's um, kind of like braided and also very messy, um, kind of like wearing, wearing very ill-fitting tattered leather armor. And she's just like kicking, she like, you see her kick over one of the younger boys and like knock him over, and she's clearly winning this uh, very low stakes um, sword fight. Does she see me? No, not at all, because you rolled a natural 20. She does not see you. Right. Uh, okay. Um, great. I'm going to mark, or the moon boy will mark her and uh, kind of dance away. <laughs> um, with a, uh, with a tw- with that 20, do I notice a uh, click? Oh, yeah. Being sick? Absolutely. Sick click? Yeah. You see um, yeah. your compatriot... Am I down with, am I down with the clickness? <laughs> sorry. I'm okay. sorry. All right, this, this arc is I done. Said, <laughs> I know I said I wouldn't for the new arc. Was this entire yeah. show an elaborate ploy to get you to that joke, Jordan? Yeah. <laughs> well, I gotta go. <laughs> My work here is done. Um, yeah, uh, the Moon Boy sees, spots this urchin who stole my hat. And um, I think he wants to uh, goad her a little bit, but seeing as he has the upper hand, he's not going to tip that. Uh, He's going to mark her location and kind of see what's happening with Click and come over. And I'd like to uh, inspect the wound if I can. Oh, absolutely. Um, You, uh, so yeah, you can kind of have a real uh, like Terminator gaze on this kid as you're like just <laughs> had scoped her out you will just generally keep tabs on her as she moves about these festivities um yeah, I and think maybe she thinks she sees me again that bad but then the crowd shifts and oh no it's just oh it's just somebody selling those upside down waffle cones made of blue corn <laughs> <laughs> Moon boy, is that is that the urchin who stole your hat over there? Yes. Would you yes. like would you like to have a, a a light revenge on her? Nothing bad, just in be- would you like me to bedevil her with magic in a nice way, in a playful way? <laughs> I would love that. That sounds like exactly the sort of revenge I would like because you know, I respect a good thieving, but I also respect a good counter prank. All right, he says I'm going very to... Frasier-y. <laughs> I want to sort turns of his attention to this deadly wound. <laughs> I want to put on a little show. Wait, clicks. All... Meanwhile, just leaking. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> oh, yes. 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 yes, somebody else will deal with that. <laughs> Hat prank. Hat prank. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, while, while they're discussing mischief, like Whipper is like has pulled out a few different salves and is trying, like, putting each of them on there and is like, oh, no, that's not it either. Oh, like, one of them starts to, like, turn green and bubble. One yeah, of them... That's chapstick. Oh, yeah. That was chapstick and you <laughs> and you know it. Nah, it's well, reacting with the icker. That's not good. Well, I, uh, the wound is not chapped. We figured that out, she says, and she, like, <laughs> rummages and around it, in this pocket you and can't honestly, quite see. And now it won't be. Good job, with yep. her. Yeah, yeah, it's okay. So we've not chapped off the list. I'm just gonna go down, and she pours uh, this like blue liquid on there, and it stings click, but it doesn't cause more damage to you. And she's like, okay, not poisoned. We know it's not poisoned either. Um, and she's just like, has pulling out more vials, and it's just like going through one by one to see. I if think she can I think it. the moon boy kind of stops her and is like, don't just stop, stop, stop. She's she's not a hot dog. <laughs> this, this is definitely relish that you've put in here. I know that she is. Not, I know that she is not a dog. What, what, what are you just? She, no, stop. Forget it. We need to get her. Let's get her back to the ship. Click. Can you make it? Do you think you can make it back to the ship? I think I might be able to. The plants. The plants that the Moon Girl gave me. I think maybe we can. I think maybe we can fix this. Whatever you, whatever you say, Moon Boy. And Click will kind of just wrap her uh, her long black cloak around her uh, oozing wound a little tighter <laughs> and hobble off to the the dinger. Uh, this is just I'm, a ran- very random question. 
Is that other Crean around here? The Crean who Click had a kind of an altercation with? Oh, oh the yeah. Crean teen? The Crean is, teen. Is that Crean in, among this crowd? And, you know, I'm just kind of, as I see Click kind of uh, hurt and being taken away. Yeah, you, um, so you all moving through the crowd almost have difficulty getting toward your ship, which is docked. Um, you know, about like ten, a fifteen minute walk away downhill. Um, you can like see the the ship spouts like cresting off in the place where you had a battle before. Um, and there's some like light sliding it up, so you imagine that your crew is probably on there. But you almost have trouble getting there because as you were walking through, it's like trying to say goodbye at my Thanksgiving party that my family has, um, where you just like <laughs> get another you know sure. ten steps and somebody's like, oh hey, like and they like want to try and talk to you um, sure. in this moment. That's uh, so, what I imagine it's like after you do a good comedy set. I've heard. <laughs> <laughs> I think in in response to to the crowd and people coming and talking, <laughs> click bellows into the air. <laughs> Get out of the way! <laughs> and casts blur and just kind of like. Chittering and huffing and pissy marches through the crowd. <laughs> Everyone starts clapping. Yeah, there's a little bit of there's a little bit of a black trail behind her. Um, um, I, I want you to roll a uh, intimidation check, not to determine the outcome here, but to determine how people react to this moment. <laughs> sure. Because I'm gonna let you get to the boat no matter what, but uh, it's good. just fun. Uh, it's an 18. Okay, with an 18, <laughs> they're like. Oh my gosh! Hell yeah! They're like, hey, every and like people start joining, and they're like, oh, we gotta get the, we gotta get these heroes. They need some rest. They need some rest. Like somebody like is yelling, and um, you see uh, Derek the Turtle, uh, who you became friends with earlier, um, kind of just be like, hey, look, I know these folks, and they need to get some rest. He's saying to like one person Derek. as you walk by, and um. <laughs> But yeah, the crowd absolutely clears and people like cheering you on. They're like, hey, thank you. Like, ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. So like, ah. And they're like, just throwing out like positive things as, uh, is the whole crew going? M- Moonboy is for sure following Click and is like kind of half apologizing for her screaming at everyone. Is like, she got stabbed by the devil. I mean, she was trying to fix it. I uh, <laughs> guy, guy, light revenge, light revenge. Yes, um, I, I will. I will go with the party as soon as I perform some sacred justice. Okay, cool. Um, <laughs> I'll, I'll get to that moment real quick. But just uh, uh, Andrew, uh, can you have flute roll a perception check as he is li- maybe like leaving with the party or like, moving with the party and is scanning the crowd for this queen? Oh my gosh, I like this new precedent. Natural twenty. What oh is happening? God. You all have to roll different things. You have to roll different numbers. That'd be a 23. Okay. Um, <laughs> you see him uh, sitting al- uh, alone with um, a... Well, I guess he's sitting with a dwarf. Uh, this kind of like older wizened dwarf who has a, a big cane. Um, and they're they're both sitting and talking and drinking by um, like a closed shop on... Like sitting on the porch itself. Um, and so now... Uh, you can you can do what you want with that information in a second, but first I want to get to this light uh, light vengeance revenge. What did you call it? Light sacred light. justice. Somewhere Went from a light justice. rank to justice and light sacred revenge. justice. Also, we got a raid <laughs> from oh, Feats and Fables. Shout out! Shout out! Hi, yeah. I'm a prank paladin. You're back again. Thank you. <laughs> Prank Paladin? Is that what you yes, said? Yes, that's what I said. Um, That'd be an amazing subclass. The, the oath of pranking. <laughs> oh my god, like a mischief paladin? Get out of my head. Yeah. That's incredible. actually to incredible. And Loki we're god. going to come back to that <laughs> totally. in the next campaign. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to gather all of the children around me. Uh, I'm distributing treats. <laughs> and um, Besna is flying around. Besna is my little mechanical hummingbird that is my familiar, and she distributes treats to the children. And I'm uh, performing a little, uh, little show, doing illusions and stuff, casting minor illusion. And I will uh, single out the uh, girl and say, uh, you, come here. I would like to show you a trick. <laughs> and... Um, I'm going to use my magical tinkering um, to, uh, I will touch her shoes 
and every time they are tapped, so every time she walks, uh, the object will emit an odor or non-verbal sound. Let's choose a non-verbal sound, and it will make a little fart oh, every oh time she God. walks. <laughs> And then I will use my magical tinkering and tap a little. She has a necklace around her neck, and I will tap that so that it will repeat every several seconds. I'm a little thief, and I love to fart. <laughs> wow. You've just destroyed this middle schooler's entire entire world. <laughs> Uh, so when you do these, let's have you roll a stealth check real quick. Sure. A oh contested stealth check with a child. I'm a little thief, but oh, I love it. might be super hard. stealthy. Wow. But that's what you're just joining in the arc. I rolled a natural 20. Oh, my God. I rolled natural 20. Oh, my God. This is arc three. All oh, 20s every game. 20s from heaven. On the dumbest Unreal. shit possible. <laughs> Pranking girls, looking around for an NPC who's not even part of the scene. Uh, <laughs> uh, whatever, prank her ass. She stole my hat. <laughs> He's, you're going to roll so a she, natural like, one trying to save my ass. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's next. Once we get to the important stuff. So she's like excited. So I do like I do like another little trick for another kid where she has a they have a toy, uh, one of their wooden swords, and I make it sparkle. And then unbeknownst to her, I give her fart shoes and a mean <laughs> necklace. <laughs> can, can we make a T-shirt that says "I'm a little thief and I like to fart"? <laughs> oh my god! Of course we can. It's 2021. Absolutely. <laughs> Or just a necklace with a locket with a speaker on it. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, so boy. funny. Okay. Okay. Oh, Sorry. Yeah. It's, ridi- um, it's, not, it's ridiculous. Look for so, those shirts at Gen Con. <laughs> abs- absolutely. Uh, so you, you rolled so well on this uh, that you, you have the... the Ra- uh, you know, the uh, attention of all of these kids and then you you pull off a couple of little tricks and they're like yeah Kai they're like know your name and they're excited about it and they're just think you're a hero uh, in general and then when you pull this off uh, like these little tricks they're just like Wah! and um, when you do the, the, the trick on this um, young little girl whose name is Tree uh, she tells you uh, and it, she's like that wasn't that cool um, oh really? Would you, uh, would you like to see something really cool? Oh nice. That's what I say. That's what I say before I do my bedeviling. <laughs> uh, she's like, no, thank you, and she folds her hands and walks away. And there's just a. Boop, a boop, boop, boop. I'm a little thief, and I love it for uh, She turns like they all laugh, and she turns around. She goes, "I right, wait, no." And um, uh, I'm a thief. I'm sorry. What did you? What did you say? <laughs> I didn't, say, I didn't say anything. You, you, uh, she points at you. She said, like, you put it, you, you tricked me. You, you. I'm a little thief, and I love to fart. No, I'm, oh, I'm oh, not. Yes. I don't like to fart. I don't like to <laughs> fart, she says. You love it. Um, but you just said you love it. Uh, the Some of the other kids, like, join in, and they're like, I'm a little thief, and I like to fart. They said, I'm... like, saying to her. And she's like, <laughs> ruined. Just ruined. You have I am, bullied a child. This is the meanest thing we've ever done. <laughs> I'm 38 Terrible. years old. <laughs> yeah, I feel a little this bad. Month. No. Uh, Listen, will, uh, it's okay to feel bad, it. but also she earned every step of those fart shoes. I will pretty swiftly end the enchantment <laughs> that uh, that causes the message to be played. I'm a little thief, and I... <laughs> But I will allow the farting shoes to remain for quite some time. Uh, she, she, seeing this and seeing the control and seeing people laugh at her, she gets mad and she runs off. But with each run, it's just like, <laughs> yeah, absolutely, absolutely. I kind of just want those as an enchanted item now. Yeah, fart shoes. Yeah, we can shoes make of happen. gaseous yeah. escape. Anti-stealth shoes. Sure. Yeah, I can make a little uh, magical item that is um, like a low-level. Uh, cursed item that's cursed with farting. Sure, sure. Yeah, let's do it. Sure. <laughs> Welcome, new viewers. Arc 3. Welcome, new viewers. Sure. This is the game. Instead of L.A. gear, it's L.A. rear. Yeah. It's got, instead of the little basketball you squeeze to pump it up, it's just a little butt. Oh, 
that. <laughs> Dungeons and farting. Um, <laughs> so, uh... <laughs> Dungeons and dragons? Uh, so, with this... Um, Flute, you can either go with the party if you want or peel mm-hmm. off and go talk to this queen. Um, Moonboy, you, I'm sure, are reveling in this light vengeance. Um, Absolutely. Every and, step of it. Uh, every <laughs> step, yeah. Absolutely. He laughed so hard that he actually farts a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> Hilarious. And so now the party, you all are together again, kind of like in a quiet moment after making it through this crowd. Um, Flute, are you staying or are you just kind of like noting and continuing on? Yeah, I was basically just kind of curious, like, what is, is that character around and how he reacted to Click being visibly hurt or anything? But no, I yeah. wasn't going to go talk to him. It seems like the party is, is raging for a while. So if there is something that you all want to do, kind of like uh, in in the, the evening here, you absolutely can. But um uh, you all have this like quiet moment together of going straight from literally a hellmouth uh, from the bowels of hell, being unsure if Kai was going to make it or not, um, departing from one of your newfound friends, and uh, into this like raucous party. And you didn't have a moment to catch your breath, but this is it. As you're kind of like walking, you can see a peak of like star and moonlight coming through uh, the ivy that covers the mouth of this cove. Um, as you head toward the docks of this like crescent shaped town and you see your lit up golden ship the like uh, the caravel this what used to be a um, a sea ship you know something that is in the water it has like functional sails and has now been turned into the vessel that you all pop around these magical ga- this magical galaxy with that you recently found out has a sentient helm as well, this kind of like stoned faced creature uh, living inside of it and you um, approach and you see uh, it's like coming home after being gone from a long trip because you can see Cobble uh, the small green kobold a uh, very old like wizened robed kobold with her little staff up in the crow's nest uh, clearly like sleeping on her arm there um you see relic is sitting on the seat of the ballista shooter at the front of the ship the large crossbow relic is the, the small halfling uh, that is a part of your crew um nice. just like working on tan- nothing yeah exactly he's like tanner skin and like sleek black hair uh slick back hair um He's uh, also like kind of snoozing in, in the seat of the chair there, but still ready to go um, <laughs> if he needs to. And uh, you don't see Goliath in the dwarven <laughs> captain of your ship, the dwarf with the cowboy hat, as he is probably underneath uh, the top deck here, uh, ready to zip away close to the spell jamming helm that powers your ship. And, um, and you see Goat the only kind of like moving around awake member of your ship who is just sweeping with this like very large boon, the big Goliath bosun um, with her uh, like undercut. She has uh, hair, which is not too common for most of the Goliaths you've come across. And um, she has no tattoos. As you know that she is from a a warrior community, a warrior uh, clutch, but she has left it and kind of to be this more zen um ship uh, person who takes care of the ship that you all are all on together and you can walk up to this sh- uh, the deck of this ship no problemo in fact go sees you all and you just see her like breathing a big sigh without really even saying anything she's like i'm uh, i'm glad to see you all i you know every time you pop away i get a little worried that I'm not going to see you, and so anyway, I don't want to get too mushy this late at night, but it's good to see you. Click kind of passes, like just fades in and out oh. from her wounds. Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> Is she like drunk? Pooling black st- ichor on the ground in front of her. She got stuck by the devil. No, oh, a, a devil. Uh. What? What? She like, if you, she goes over to you quickly, and it's just like huge hulking figure. Um, comes over and just very carefully and nimbly, like, uh, pulls up your armor, um, and it, it's like, oh, oh no, this looks terrible, this is, oh my god, that's not okay, poison. It's, okay. it's, it's, it's okay, no, it's not, it's, um, we don't, we don't know what it is, but I think, uh, I think, I 
think we can help her. Can, can you, can we get her down below decks where I've been keeping my plants? Yes, she scoops both Click up in one arm and you, Moonboy, up in another and just uh, like walks wee. immediately downstairs uh, below deck here. And um, I'm going to throw up real quick. If you all want to open your roll 20s, I just want to... We haven't got to reveal this map yet, but it is a just an amazing uh, remapping of the uh, uh, very detailed version of the map um, of the dinger that our map maker Joshua Smith has done. Ugh, I and love it so much. I'm going to pop so it up here on the stream in just a second. But, Show them. Um, They're ready. Yeah, it's so good. It's just so, so good. Um, okay, cool. All right, there's there's one uh, there's just the top deck here. I've got it's some so old cool. tokens on there, but um, yeah, this is the uh, this is the new shit map, and she's gonna bring you down below here in this. What is it? Oh yes, we also have below deck here too. Um, very cool, very fun. Um, oh, hold on. There this we go. Very cool, so very fun. Cool. Yeah, I love it. Um, it's so cool. It's so, uh, it's so oh, wild. Oh, I think I see too. Moonboy's barrel. Yes, <laughs> that's do. true. There oh is, my gosh. Um, and Moonboy, if you want to direct go the, you know, this big Goliath that's carrying you, I know where you want to yes. go and I want to zoom in on the map. So if you want to just um, tell them, tell, tell Go what your plan is, that would be great. So yeah, we're going to, um, Goat is going to pick us up and whisk us down the stairs to the, to the mid deck where kind of the crew bunks and everybody stays and sleeps and stuff and then even below that into the cargo hold uh and kind of at the front of the cargo hold here um amid and also harlan did you see that thing that i messaged you about i can double check on discord um and kind of in the front of what do you call it the four as opposed to the aft yes um but before we, we, we get too far there i just want to um uh there is josh in fact, didn't put your plant hold in the cargo hold, but if you look next to oh, the stairs okay. there, he gave you your own little closet for oh, this. Where's that? So um, it's right by the entrance of the stairs. Um, I'm going to switch over so the stream can see it as well, but I just want to, um, I know we canonically put it down in the cargo hold, but he gave you your own little plant closet that he put on the oh, map. Yeah, no, so that's I just totally wanna... fine. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I see it. I see it. Okay, so yeah. under these stairs, let's say. Yes, yeah. Moonboy's right growing the... operation. Under these stairs, <laughs> yeah. you do you do literally, <laughs> you find, you see that he, it, there's kind of this area that's been sort of Pee Wee herman a little bit to have like yes. shower curtains and stuff and weird lights, phosphorescent crystals and what have you hanging from strings and there's all of these plants that were given to him by the moon girl um, from their home planet that is no longer Lunastera and uh, they're they look great he's been growing these for weeks and you also see down in here uh, the halfling that we found Melzor uh, kind of comes out from between these these uh, plants and when we found him he, remember he had that horn and he was all crazy and necromantic and weird and he looks a little better he looks like he's been eating his hair's back in a ponytail uh, hey uh, like when, when goat opens the door too he's like hi i uh, i bet you thought that i was stayed behind it's untrue <laughs> um i've oh, been God. sleeping in the cargo hold this whole time and i apologize for um the buckets down there don't please don't open any of them i'll handle them myself thank you very much um but <laughs> moon, moon boy did find me so um i'm here i guess i totally to be honest, forgot i, the, I kind of star. forgot that he was here <laughs> yes a, a lot a lot of people kind of forgot he was here and i found him he was eating garbage and kind of reverting going f feral a little bit and uh that's true. I was trying watching. very hard to avoid anyone knowing I was here. I was a bit of a stowaway for a while. And he looks at you and he's like with these like wispy gray hairs around him and like kind of crazy eyed. And he's like, does anyone feel like there's just something wrong with the universe all the time? Because I was okay. in the cargo hold. I was thinking about no. anyway. What? No, it's, it's, it's just one of those things. I, Moonboy, I should. <laughs> okay. Yes, I feel it too, Melzo. He's still working. He looks um, at you and goes, Plant. Click's head flops to the side and goats are. Oh, God. Okay. Um, and she uh, stares at the little halfling. Okay. Uh, listen, how, how are they? How are the, how are the plants looking? 
Oh, well, Marshall's doing great. Uh, but Meredith having a hard time a little bit, so I uh, added a bit of um, paprika into the soil and kills most plants. Doing great for Meredith, he says, as he points over to this, like, small blue luminescent plant. He's like, I feel like it's going well. How do you all feel? He says to the plant uh, room when, and when then shakes his head. We're dying, some of us. Oh, yeah, we all are. <laughs> no, I mean, I, eventually, I, we're going to get there. Uh, I was in a cocoon for a while. Step, st I know. <laughs> oh, that's step, right. Step aside. I've got to, I've got to get it at the twins. Oh yes. And he, uh, he uh, kind of uh, makes Melzor step aside, and uh, and he kneels down, and he, you see, he kind of pulls this pot out that's even more secluded than the others, but it's right near this little blue crystal, and it's the first plant that he had. Uh, the, when it was just that plant in here, but now there's two of them, and they're kind of these little lobed plants, and he snaps off uh, one of the lobes, and it's got this strange kind of luminescent blue goo in it, and he uh, he picks up, uh, he goes over to a little area that Melzor has set up with kind of cans of water and fertilizer and stuff, and he starts heating some water on this little kind of arcane uh, plate, and uh, crushes up this little, this little petal with some other things, and pours it into this water, and makes this little tea out of it. And he walks this over. It's time for a snack, my boy. And he's like, ah, "Shut up! I, I think it might be actually." <laughs> but, uh, and he goes, "Lay her, lay her down, lay her down, right here under the stairs." And he goes up, and uh, he looks like he's gonna kind of pour this tea over the wound, but then he drinks the whole thing, and. Uh, <laughs> you see that the moon boy kind of fills with this, this, uh, this, the light from this tea, and he places his hands over the wound, and uh, he casts for the first time at level five, greater restoration. Ooh, yeah, and yeah, so there, you know, there is this white uh, lunar glow that comes off of moon boy, and you just see it seep into the wound, and this, uh, what looks like ash and ember and black ichor just kind of moving around the edge of this almost looks like a gaping mouth from the side of click that is getting wider and wider and opening more and more um instead uh seems to glow a bit and you see these like burning colors get softer and softer and the orange uh like of your carapace kind of just uh, starts to shine brighter there and f almost fold on its edges until it gets closer and closer and heals up completely and um, you no longer have that penalty to the your max HP. Um, you do not heal that amount, but you no longer have yeah. that penalty to your max HP, which was down to what? It was from what to what? It was, I had a minus 11 reduction on my max HP. Um, my current hit points are 17. So I, I've, <gasps> but like <laughs> my max hit points were 83 and I was down to 72 on my max. Good God. Okay. So um, I, I will also cast healing word. I truly love that we're starting this hit point with you all just beat the shit because you. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> no, click is busted. Yeah. Um, um, that, um, the devils are tough. Uh, yeah, so you... Covered in bike marks from hell piranhas. Um, <laughs> yeah, so, like, you all are this kind of, like, beat-up, wounded, kind of, like, nose-bleedy crew uh, in this moment, and... But you're back on your ship, you know? Um, you regain, um, 7, 14, 21 hit points. Yeah. Nice. Uh, and I'll do it again. What the hell? I'll cast Healing Word again at 4th level. Cool. Okay. Yeah. I love... God, Jordan, and, and you can tweak this in any way you want to, but I just love that you find this garden room closet for the first time, <laughs> and in it is somebody has been living in it this whole time, and you all did not know. And inside of this, finally, in this quiet moment after uh, you know trouncing an evil pirate crew, destroying a very established devil that has been here for centuries, um, that. You all are in this plant room all of a sudden, and there's just this kind of white glow to it that is similar to when it snows outside and then the moon is real bright and it almost feels like daytime. Um, but it has 
the green warmth to it as well. That are is this room full of plants, and um, yeah, and Moonboy kind of just like fills up the room with uh, this healing energy, and it heals you quick. Like your the burns in your body from these hell deer uh, just wash away. Um, Malzor, this like stinky old man halfling, is like. Anybody want a sardine? And he just pulls a sardine out of his pocket. Um, Click looks at Malzor and says, Moon Boy, you look terrible. No, yes. No. I haven't heard that name in what a long time. He says it you. No, 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 it's me. She thinks you're, you're not me. No, I could be. I could, if I, you want me I'm to. I'm the boom. You heard it the second we walked in here. He's yeah. fine. He's, he really is. Maybe, maybe Malzor wants to live in the cove. She she takes the sardine from Malzor and turns over toward Moonboy's voice and snaps it behind her uh, her little uh, bronze translator and says, "Thank you, Moonboy. I feel much better." She's okay. She's okay, folks. Good. Malzor, would you like somewhere to live that isn't in this glow grow room? He doesn't like outside a lot. Yeah, but I would just prefer... Does he freak you out? Well, I, I was actually going to live on Mingabwe, the moon that you all dropped me off of before, but I fell asleep inside of the ship and I just woke up and you guys were going. So, um, you know, my motto is anywhere beats uh, entombed in a <laughs> grave that I was it's not a, mentor, a meant for, possessed it, by a ghost. That's what I always say. I always say that. Yeah, It's a motto in progress. <laughs> no, I'm done saying it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm glad. So. I'm glad you're okay. <laughs> Click. Try not to get well. stung by any devils again. God, I keep getting sucked on by. <laughs> I know. My HP keeps getting taken from me. <laughs> well, I mean, does anybody want any plants or something? This one makes you see a color that you can't otherwise. Yeah, Gregory. He's a wild one, Malzor says. That's pretty wild. Is that the name of the plant or the color? It's, well, kind of both, really. Uh, sp- speaking of Gregory, did anyone see him at the party? Oh, Gregory Punch. Gregory Punch. I didn't I didn't see him when we I didn't see got him all leave. jumbled up coming out of the Hellmouth. Yeah. The kind of like local he hero. He made it out, right? Yeah. Yeah, he was, he was with us walking into town and then we just... You know, once a crowd hit us, I don't, I don't know where he went. I don't he... see him. Irish goodbye. <laughs> hey, LT good we got a raid. Yeah, yeah <laughs> coming in from LT Good Times. Thanks oh. so much, everybody. Ah. Hi, yeah. friends. Hello. Hello. This is the first episode of our third arc of our uh, <laughs> session. So, thanks for hanging out with us. Um, yeah. So, um, you. You hear a little, <clears throat> and you see the old wizened kobold cobble is leaning against the doorway, holding her staff, and she looks at you and is like, oh, yeah, um, Talon says bye. Uh, she's left with Gregory Punch. She sent me uh, a little magical thing in my brain. Sorry, I just woke up. Um... <laughs> <laughs> Why would are she you, send are, are you? Are you talking to... about a dream? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, people people don't yeah. communicate through dreams. Um, and she oh, says and shakes her head. And she's like, um, "Net's made up. You, you got to throw bones in a shell to look at the future." Anyway, um, yeah, Talon left with Gregory Punch. She told me they're going to Mingabwe to uh, find Talon's sister. So. Oh. And let the uh, fourth ring, the uh, you know those the people that you're friends with. She's kind of like drowsily, like trying to get things that you all know all of the things already. Yeah, the 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 secret hitting organization that is trying to save the world that are, you all are friends with. She's gonna go check in with them and let them know that you have a spell jammer helm that can jump from dimension to min- dimension very easily. Yes, yeah, she probably is going to tell them that. Yeah. Okay, anyway, good night, she says, as Cobble's like... Good night. Yeah. You're just, you're Bye, just Maltor. Cobble. <laughs> are you... Are you... 
Wait, did, yeah, didn't you just wake up? You're going back to bed? I'm old. <laughs> Don't. Are you, are you depressed? Uh, I mean, I think about my own death constantly, but I think that is, I think, I think it's a, a weird thing that people don't. So she says that she kind of like picks her teeth. I think about your death. Off. Well, no, we were always talking about how, about how she was just being morbid and weird. But I think we've just been ignoring the signs of clinical <laughs> depression. Yeah, <laughs> our poor little kobold navigator. Always sleeping, thinking about death. Uh, always burning a single grim candle. Hiding. <laughs> a, lot of sol- a lot of solitary time. Yeah. Those are the side effects of Prozac. Yeah. Cobble, think how many times you've told us you were going to die someplace we went, and you haven't died yet. Uh, Every place we go, you, you tell us you're going to die. Here you are. She looks at you all, rubbing the sleep from her eyes, and she says, You know what? I have to say, um... I've been feeling pretty optimistic lately. I I was very certain that uh, because Kai was here in this near unknown or unmatched uh, m- magical being of unknown sources that we were going to be hunted down and killed and that um, between that and Goliathan's association with uh, you know, stealing this very powerful helm, that that was just too many rare, powerful things in one place for us to not die at the hands of them in some way or another. But I gotta say, I like hanging out with you all. And, uh, oh. you, you kick most people's ass. So, maybe like I'll... Or we powerful. run away from them. <laughs> Sometimes. That's right. Don't worry, Cobble. Your death will come as a surprise. Yeah. <laughs> she she grins and goes, Maybe I'll die in my sleep. Maybe. Oh, Good night. The best. And she says, like, kind of like, <laughs> oh, and, and you, you very rarely have seen her grin. And she's just, like, kind of, like, chuckling. Ooh. And it's like, That's <laughs> spooky. Yeah. Would you, like oh, a, would you like a sandwich before you go to bed? Maybe she, you'd like to kick a sandwich's ass. She she raises up her hand and she's like, I already took it out of your pocket. Thank you, though. And uh, it is, like, clearly <laughs> oh, a sandwich that is in your pocket. And, um, oh. I mean, it's been in there for a while. That's what. That's like a fermented <laughs> sandwich. <laughs> but she stops Trust and looks. Her, she stops and looks around and goes, "Do you have another one?" Yeah, I don't actually have pockets, so I don't really know where you got that from. Come on, let's, let, let's Mal- get you a sandwich. Malzor looks over and is like, "Hey, that is my sandwich," and he. <laughs> Um, okay, you you eat that down here, and remember, don't let anyone see your weird face and body, and look after my plants. Oh, he's like, I wrote, I literally wrote that down on a piece of paper because you told me to, and I say it to myself every night before I go to sleep. Thank you, closet gardener Malzor. <laughs> Good night, moon boy. I love you. I love you too, Malzor. Um, <laughs> and he uh, he just like lies down on the floor immediately. Where he <laughs> It's so sad. Um, <laughs> it's so sad. Maybe we can get Melzor to do other chores. I think yes, he feels comfortable much. in there yes, because of how long he was cocooned for hundreds of years. I think that, could, yes, I think could could him down something. a hammock or something. He, I tried. I gave him a pillow and he tore it to pieces. <laughs> yeah, he's, <laughs> he's laying da- face down on the ground and he just his, puts his hand on. He's like, I'm good. Just like without looking up at all, just puts his stuff up in the air. Found him with a dagger, stabbing it. Um, all right. Well, we just no need pillow. to do something about the all the fertilizer in there that he's right making. <laughs> right, right, right. That well, that, like you said, like he said, he, there's buckets, and we uh, we could go and dump them in the what we've canonically established as a portal to some sort of crap dimension in the toilet. <laughs> That's true. To anyone new to our stream, oh, yeah. we have firmly established that canonically in this world, not just on your ship, but in this world, uh, all toilets are portals. Of some it's sort. common like practice to use portal. Just, just a makes portal. Sense. Yeah. To in fact, a pocket. and we even had an adventure yeah. in our Patreon game oh, that, God, that went right. into that world. Andrew ran a game. Andrew ran a game in the shit dimension, truly. 
<laughs> Once you were there, you wouldn't call it a shit dimension if so you had cool. experienced it. But, I love it. Uh, there are yeah. lots of feces. Er, d- different it sources. was very cool. Yeah. Um, <laughs> well, are, so are you all kind of like winding up to go to bed here? Uh, I know if you kind Absolutely. of like had your yeah. guts kicked in a bit by I hell. I think uh, Flute desperately wants to be at the party, but he got pretty badly burned up and he's pretty exhausted. Uh, so yeah, I think he's ready for, ready for sleep. I, I will say, Andrew, just... Uh, you can go back to the party and still get a full rest, but you only have about an hour or two there. So, um, if you want to sneak back to the party uh, after the break that we're about to take, you absolutely can. Um, but uh, I just I just want to make sure that I'm not like waving away that moment with you all are here and going to take a long rest because you can sneak that in. But we are uh, I do want to provide the party an opportunity to take a long rest. Cool. Um, yeah, in that case, if it's that early in the day, I guess uh, he would go back to the party. I'll go party with you. Yeah. Um, yeah, I will take. I will be staying here, taking a long rest. I've never been to a party. Yeah, that's true. What are you uh, talking about? We had a we had a party with Laloon. Remember? If it's and her vault, well, and her vault. that was more of a gathering. If it's long, if it's early in the day, can we take a long rest and then go to the party at night? No, it is. It's it's the evening, so like you would kind of have evening, to like right? push it off. Okay. Yeah, um, we could take a short rest. Well, I have a new concoction that I've developed that allows you to rest very quickly. Um, what? Oh, one of those gas station counter pills. All right, it's kind of like that. <laughs> Yellow <yeah>. jackets. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, okay, let's. I yeah, think, well. regardless, Click stays on the ship. Okay, cool. I will try to peer pressure Click and Moonboy to go back to the party. Come on, uh, it we works. saved, we saved a whole, a whole. Cone. It works. It absolutely works. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Are you sure you necessary. don't want to roll for it? Yeah, I was gonna. <laughs> no. Yeah. No, the Moonboy goes. Okay. All right. Um, Kai, yes, Wind Rider. I will have a pirate party with you. Uh, Kai, you see Click kind of, like, definitively say that she is staying here. Um, are you staying here mm-hmm. on the ship, or are you going with him to the party? Click, I could uh, give you the benefits of a rest very quickly if you want to try this new elixir. No, no. I have to think. All right. Um, at, the end of, at the end of the last episode, Click had... Uh, conversation with the uh, with the undying queen about how her planet is being eviscerated. Mm. Oh, uh, I met her. Right. <laughs> and uh, just for for everyone who's new to the stream, um, her home planet where she was banished from is is being torn apart and raided. And um, I think she's a little put out. They had a big fight and. Um, She's, she doesn't sleep, necessarily, but I, I think she's going to take this time to think. Yeah, yeah. You, yeah, you, sure. the, the queen that, um, for anyone who did not, uh, uh, who has not watched every hour of the 300 hours of our show, um, <laughs> the queen, the bug humanoid that Flute spotted in the town click before ran into, and they discussed the... He was also from the same planet that you were from and um, discussed intentionally leaving and you all kind of had it out friend, and, and not necessarily friendly matter, but not necessarily extremely violently, but um, about whether or not your planet was worth saving. Um, in some ways, you were told that something devious is going on there that involves... Um, what would you say it involves, Rachel? What would you? How would you phrase it? Um, well, we've talked about the... Click's home planet is uh, specializes in psionic energy and has a large source of psionic energy that um, they're they're defending against, and that seems to be yes. Wh- whatever is invading is after. Yeah. So, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, you know, yeah, you're taking this time like time away to think. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, Click, I met this undying queen, or at least. Com- communed with a portion of her essence inside the infernal machine. Should we talk about this after the break? (laughs) (laughs) Does he say that? Yeah. Well, look into the camera. Yeah. And they'll say, we'll be right back after these messages. (laughs) So, here's the the main thing I want to know is, Kai, do you stay with, do you stay here with Click on the ship? 
Yeah, it seems like she's got some stuff going on. I'll hang out. Okay, cool. Well, we will do these uh, two and two scenes um, to finish off this evening in the cove that you all have freed from being the cove of the bones, but is now just the cove that is uh, celebrating their newfound lack of obligation to do piracy. Um, the cove of whatever you want. <laughs> I'll, uh, I'll punch him over there. The cove of the bros. Hey, nice, mm-hmm. nice. Yes. I was thinking, we'll what's the opposite the of party. bones? <laughs> ham. I'm the just gonna fade ham. off, fade out on this as, as you moon boy, like as they head to the party, they're discussing what the cove yes. should be of. Okay, um, we're gonna take a real quick break. We're just gonna take a five minute break to drink pee. We're going to drink pee, and then we'll be right back here in just a second to do the second half of our episode one of arc three. All right. See you in a second. Drinking pee is part of our brand.
right. Hi, hello. We are back from the break. Thanks for hanging out with us. Um, okay, cool. So let's start here with um, Moonboy and Flute. Let's have you all kind of marauding back into this town, uh, coming up on the edge of this raucous party here. Uh, you can see it's gotten a bit more um, liquidated at this point, and there are a uh, less people and more alcohol uh, here of, of various, you can smell these like various fruity uh, wines and um, some just like much darker syrups that uh, they seem to be mixing um, with maybe dirt you can't quite tell but it's like a thicker material and um yeah you all are in the midst of this uh very like warm lit night that is the biggest party this town has had in a while in the the city circle that has kind of fountains throughout it and what would you like to do Oh, okay. Uh -oh. Well, and we're back. Okay, so, um, Andrew, do you want to do that very funny bit again that everyone missed? <laughs> do the whole thing. Do the whole thing. Yeah, because you're you're back now for sure. Uh, okay. Um, yeah, I like I was saying, I did not indulge in Kai's concoction, nor did I rest. So, I'm very, you know, haggard and a. Uh, you, you know, my clothes are still singed, but I'm in, I'm in high spirits, so I'll try some of the fruity wine, and then I'll kind of just, like, post up, much like a stand-up comedian after a show lurking by the exit to a club, just hoping for some handshakes or high fives or compliments, um, you know, any, anything like that. You, you absolutely get them. There is, uh... You see Derek the Mechanic Tortle is like one of the first ones who walks up to you as he re recognizes your form immediately and he's like, Hey, I just want to say... Thank you. Um, you're good. And he pats you on the back and walks away. And there's quickly this just like swath of uh, young folks who have like different sort of like flower bands in their hair who join you as well and they're like uh, asking you questions about what instruments you play and um yeah help me settle help me settle this and i got moon boy right there Hello. what how should we rename the cove cove of the moon or cove of the wind oh. cove of ham was also thrown out <laughs> i think a co cove of, of ham um, they start discussing it amongst themselves, and you know, like uh, they're like, "Well, yeah, you know, we, we don't really have ham here." So it's one of like uh, this younger uh, male human who is right there, and he's like, "Yeah, we don't really have ham. We have um, it's more of different sorts of uh, poultry that we, you know, of okay, various well, sizes. So it might need to be okay. cope of the chicken." The other one's like, "I don't know. And we also don't get a wind here, so it's like a young, um, like you can't quite tell." And She's uh, looking at you and says, mm, but uh, the moon does shine through the ivy well, so that's nice too. And they, they, they begin just like kind of like going off and naming things and like, <laughs> Cove of the Rocks. No, that doesn't, that's not cool. Cove of the Cool. No, not rocks. no, um. Cove of the, Cove of the Moon, boy. Eh? <laughs> uh, roll I thought we agreed. I thought we agreed we weren't going to name it after any one person. We already, okay. we already, we already said that. I don't know. I want you to roll a persuasion check, uh, Moon Boy. It's a difficult DC, but you know you could do it. Let's see what people think of Cove of, of the Moon Boy. <laughs> <laughs> I've rolled a fifteen. <laughs> oh, all right. Well, uh, they they're like, you know what? We're gonna put a statue up to you. What one of the like? taller, uh, gruffer looking, um, he's like a 
orcish looking guy. He's like, yeah, I think I think we should put a, a step. What do you all think? Statue up for the moon boy? And they're like, yeah. And they say like everybody's like, like that's a great idea. And the other one's like, I I can make I can. I can find some rocks, and the other one's like, "Yeah, I'll stick them together," and they, they kind of like agree. <laughs> listen, they listen, agree. Yeah. Listen, if you're going to make a statue for me, I want it to be of my pal, the Wind Rider. Well, because and, that actually, him, maybe ev- ev- everyone, maybe Click and Kai, Kai no, as well. Even better, four Wind Riders. <laughs> Uh, I've been, like half through this bottle of uh, r- raspberry <laughs> wine. <laughs> Think, thinking, thinking about it. Do Each these riding a different flavor of wind? The four flavors of wind: <laughs> raspberry, passion fruit, <laughs> strawberry, uh, and the do... forbidden licorice. <laughs> do these people have instruments on them? Um. No, uh, they, they do not. They're more just like asking you about them, but there is like a okay. band playing will... in the corner for sure. Oh, okay. Could you, could you fetch uh, a lute for me if someone has a lute and maybe some pipes for my friend here? No, oh, yeah, absolutely. It says um, like a, a, a small human uh, girl and she's like, yeah, hell yeah. And she goes over and she goes over to the band who is like, quite inebriated as well and she literally takes the uh, pipes and loot from them and like scoops them out and they just like kind of look up and like huh oh all right and they say and they both like lean against each other and fall asleep um (laughs) and she comes back to you with uh pipes and a loot this is i've never seen moon boy play the pipes nor do i I have nor has he ever mentioned it i'm (laughs) handing them to him uh (laughs) And I'm, I'm like, just finding out, and I think the Moon Boy is finding out too, because he's, as we know, an, amni- a- an amnestic. He doesn't remember who he was. Uh, I think he's finding out for the first time that uh, the Moon Boy is, in fact, proficient in the pan flute. Well, we'll find out. <laughs> we'll find out with that when we see a performance yeah. check from both of you. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yeah, I want to like. Uh, you know, buzzed like and pretty tired, but work on a song with Moonboy about Corundus Plunch, uh, Corundus Plunch, sorry, uh, yeah. descending yeah. <laughs> down into hell and punching the devil until he gave his name back and uh, saving this cove. Um, it's such but a good folk song. Come on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so Lord. Uh, and I'm giving out, you know, shout outs to everybody else. Uh, although I, I don't, give... I still don't really understand what Kai was doing. So it's kind of like vague, uh, <laughs> I'm going um, to bless Kai, us and Kai both. was there. And, and Kai was that. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'm going to bless us both. We both, the moon oh, uh, shines as if from nearby and blesses our instruments. Okay, I mean, yeah. Being half buzzed and blessed. Oh, this is great. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what an afternoon, right? Oh, yeah. my gosh. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean. Driving is drunk driving. Yeah. <laughs> oh, God. Um, cool. So, yeah, we'll. Uh, uh, we'll play the song. Is there already? Can we? Can we uh, perform this the song once we kind of get it? Oh yeah! Did you roll the persuasion check? I mean, the performance check. Yeah. No, I haven't rolled it yet. Yeah, go for it. Roll it for me. I've rolled. For us. I've rolled an eleven. Okay. Oh, okay, we're rolling them separate. Yep. All right. Absolutely. And I and we're blessed, so I get to have that D four. As the moonlight shines down upon you on these. Uh, borrowed instruments hanging out with this late night crew around you just complimenting him uh i rolled a 28 all right with uh you know flute or moon boy you hold a tune you know <laughs> you you realize that you can do it um just accent I think, boot, boot. I, think I, rem- yeah. I think i remember this and that's all coming back to me <laughs> yeah. Um, and with that, there is a stunning silence as um, from the crowd around you, not from you all, but like from this kind of loudly chattering uh, hanger honors of toward the end of this party. Um, they all stop as flute. You are just going wild on this loot. You're truly have captured them because when he is plucking the strings they are echoing in a, a wider way that we, 
only the mastery of a musical bard can really bring such sound out of a instrument that is not the most finely crafted in the world, but you know how to get the sound out of it. And uh, yeah, flute. I want you to give uh, give us a little bit of this scene. What does it sound like? What is what is this, this capturing moment as the the musical energy is kind of like sewn together with the just beautiful music itself? Yeah, flute. Uh, as uh, longtime viewers of the show will know, flute might be a bard, but he is a very reluctant bard. He went to bard at college, but what he really wanted to be was a swashbuckling adventurer or a pirate of sorts and so he d doesn't play his lute a ton every now and then he picks it up um but after this most recent excursion into that hellgate and it's uh he's sort of sort of figuring out um what what is going on with him he feels more like himself than he has in a very long time and it's like picking up an old pastime that you kind of fell out of but and you're like, oh yeah, like I'm pretty good. I'm pretty good at this. And he, uh, yeah, he's also just inspired by uh, Corundus Planche's uh, bravery and um, you know seeing him stripped of his powers and uh, that whole uh, if you missed it that whole three episode arc with our guest Dan Sheehan. Um, yeah, he's uh, he's both inspired and he's he's feeling like himself. Wonderful. And Moon Boy's there, and he's like, boop, 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 yeah. boop. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yep, just little accents on the on the off beats. <laughs> it's a hype man for sure. Every once in a while, he's going, yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Um, uh, and you, uh, yeah, so with your kind of like singing of, of bits of the tale of this as well, uh, people can like join you in, a, in, in the refrain parts about it, just like saying uh, Corundus, Planche's name. Uh, Planche was his name. Um, and you see a few people talking, like, yeah, yeah, I knew that guy. He was real nice to me, and he always looked out for my, my kids. And um, so it's like a large Did you minotaur know his in the name back. Was Corundus Planche. No, 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 but from the description of the song, I now know who he is, and I can hold him in my heart in a newfound way, says the minotaur. Um, <laughs> sorry, I. Done a lot of work to be more emotionally direct, yells the Minotaur. I don't know why I'm being so forthcoming. It's I think it's the the, the alcohol. Uh, We're I'm... all trying to get better every day. Sorry. Follow in the steps of Corundus Planch. Corundus Planch, he says, like from the back. Yes. And, um, Absolutely. Yeah. So Andrew, with this incredibly successful check, I am thoroughly establishing in the canon of this game that Corundus Planch is uh, someone who's name they sing in taverns here nice. and yeah. do very just like Touch fondly Great. yeah when we first uh, walked in we walked into the the wasp the tavern here in town and they were singing a song and so yeah the go uh flute would be stoked to walk in and hear this song being sang well yeah in the future it, it could surely happen um oh were you did you want me to break into like was that my my cue to like Strike up the ska band. <laughs> Corundus Blanche! Ba, 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 as soon as we finish Corundus it, Moonboy Moon Boy breaks into like a cover, like a ska cover of a popular song. Ah, <laughs> oh, no, Moonboy. No, 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 no. What, no, no, the one song. no, no. Ska's coming back. I'm telling you. Um, <laughs> yes. Uh, Ska is, I'm just canonically making Ska sea shanties of this world because it's like sky but said kind of <laughs> drunkenly. So it's just like tales of being going to the sky. It's very yes, rudimentary art. Um, Most Ska songs can be sung to a sea shanty. Yeah. I just want to make this very clear. I'm not hating on Ska. I just, I, I just want to make. No, don't no, we can. Don't we throw can. this on me. If anything, you're incorporating ska into the fabric of our world. In a way yeah. that makes me deeply uncomfortable. We've <laughs> never had to knock on. I one. mean, we've got a ska band just has, in our crew. <laughs> I just wonder if I could. Good. I'm glad to see you. I'm fulfilling the same roles I fulfilled in high school uh, in this D and D stream. So, um, you were into ska in high school. I can see that. I guess. Yes, <laughs> I played How dare you? Yeah. Um, so, uh, let's... 19th level rude boy 
Is you all uh, six, you would all want to accomplish anything else before? That uh, was all I wanted to do. And then afterward, I'll hand the uh, loot back to the sleepy musician. Back. Not the most finely crafted in the world, but pretty nice. <laughs> says, Thanks, Mom, as he grabs the loot and falls asleep on it. Um, uh, that's all I want to do. But Boom Boy, what do you? What do you got I'm, your um, long sleeves? I'm sort of. Uh, I'm not trying to look. I'm not trying to pick a fight here. And I think this is the Moon Boy talking to Windrider after they've had a, a few drinks and the song went so well. And uh, he goes, I'm not trying to pick a fight here, but if you hear those fart shoes, you know, uh, let's see if we can contact that girl. I feel sort of bad about the, the fart shoes thing, but I think she deserved it, and I'd sort of like to say if... See if we're even, Stevens. Um, uh, can we cock an ear for the fart shoes? Uh, as long as you say that sentence again. <laughs> can we cock an ear for the fart shoes? Of Absolutely. course we can cock an ear for the Another. fart shoes. Windrider. Um, Moonboy, give us a give us a perception check here. Listen, listen, Are we still blessed? How long does it last? All, all night I've been thinking I've heard them, but listen, listen quickly. That may have been me. (laughs) (laughs) I just want to clarify canonically that the fart shoes are two slightly different or re blast. Nice. Like the start of Brass Monkey by the Beastie Boys? It's more like a a tuba. Like, boom, 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 boom. boom, boom. 25. To listen. Um, You hear uh, from above you. (laughs) In a kind of like on the awning of a store that is behind you, um, that seems to sell various sorts of grains. Uh, you hear mm-hmm. uh, on the awning, <laughs> <laughs> and then you hear uh, <laughs> in a in a in a second different tone. Damn it, she says. <laughs> oh, hang on. I think we have a little a little listener. A little birdie. It's okay. We can hear you. You can come down. I can fix those shoes for you. If you show yourself. I'm a thief and I love to fart. He's going to call out (laughs) into the night. Uh, I can hear you. Hat thief with the farting shoes. uh, You, you, uh, you see it. Oh yeah, I'm up here. Um, why don't you look up at me? Stick your head out uh, from under the awning. Don't, don't do that. Don't. <laughs> uh, I'll take my hat off and kind of clutching it to my chest, I'll like look out from under the awning. Uh, roll a dexterity saving throw. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Thanks for the support despite, there, Rachel. I appreciate that. Despite being <laughs> drunk, I got a 19. Uh, you, you see a big, uh, like swirl of thick red liquid uh, falling down at you as you stick your head out and uh, you pull it back really quick as a bunch of red paint just like splatters on the ground and she's like shit I was thinking of (laughs) carrying he's trying to carry you space carry Um, and then you hear like a a, a clatter (laughs) and a wait wait I'm trying to she comes down She comes down one of the banisters next to you and she pulls out her wooden sword and she's like, that's it, you and me, a duel for my honor, she says to you, moon boy. I am going to (laughs) put up both of my hands and I am going to uh, kind of click my heels and uh, wink at her and start to hover a little bit (laughs) and I will cast uh, Dispel Magic on her fart shoes. Um... She's like, ah! And she holds up her sword as a, a spell is cast at her. And she's like, am I a toad now? No, I I, I defaulted your shoes. She looks down and she like stamps up and down and there's no sound. And she's like, well, good. Um, shit, thank you. You're welcome. You Does she have a real people's. sword or a wooden sword? A little wooden sword. You shouldn't how, steal. How old are you, you shouldn't, girl? Hang on. Oh, sorry. You sh- you shouldn't steal people's hats. Well, I wanted to be a pirate. I don't give it enough respect. 
no matter what, how good I am at sword fighting. And so I thought if I could get some loot from someone so, uh, she looks as weird as yourself, then maybe I, it would be a valuable treasure. Thank you. yeah. You're welcome, uh, she you says, know, no, without a beat. Yeah. You know, uh, I respect a good grab. And, uh, what you did was not a good grab. Sloppy, at best. Uh, you know who's an incredible pirate? Me? My, my friend, the Wind Rider, right here. She looks at you, almost like noticing you're there for the first time, Flute. <laughs> Why yeah, do you have so I, many I'm names? like uh, drunk enough so that when he's like points, I'm like looking over to. Oh right, yeah, <laughs> it's you, right, it's you. yeah. Talking about you. Why do you have so many names? She says. Put my put my hat on at a cool angle. How how old are you, girl? I'm 25. How how old are you, are you really? Uh, roll an insight check. Is she human? She really is 25. It's a what? curse. All right, inside. It's going to be a twenty-one. Oh, she's Ooh. she's lying. She's trying to be as tough as okay. she possibly can, and she's trying to grasp at uh, straws to make you intimidated by her. And so she's trying to throw off an air of mystery with, like maybe <laughs> that she is like an elf or something that um, just oh, like okay. a, a different with, uh, species that. Um, with that, with that insight, can I get a ballpark of age? Is yeah. a teenager? Yeah, she's like twelve. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, Moonboy starts she, cracking up when she says 25. She's a young human. And she's like, shit! I need to practice lying more. You'll be, you'll be an all, all right pirate one one day. I'll tell you what, don't make me regret this. I uh, reach by my belt. I take out one of my daggers that I keep on the back of my belt, and I'm going to hand it over to her. <laughs> oh my. She looks at it. She's like, is this cursed? Is this going to make me fart too? <laughs> yes, make it fart. Make it fart. Yeah. Please, for the love of God, make I don't it have fart. that power. <laughs> no, it's not cursed. Oh my God, a knife that I... when it stabs, yeah. it farts. <laughs> the fart dagger. Uh, well, it, it seemed dagger. it seemed cursed when I would try to use it, but no, it's it's not cursed. Why are you being so nice to me? I don't know. I, Suppose I, I I know what it's like to want to be a pirate. I mean, like you're better than a pirate. You're like everybody loves you, and you don't even have to steal things. People just give you things because you you're nice. It sucks. <laughs> he steals well, things. Well, still takes. Yeah, yeah. We we sometimes have stolen things, but reg regardless, it it takes it takes work. We had to go down to hell and deal with the the devil. I would have gone to hell if somebody would have asked me. Town. Well, it was it was pretty unpleasant. I'll like point to my burned, you know, my clothes, pretty burned. She and, like my. She spits out a little face. fish when you show it to her. She's like, oh, oh, oh. oh. Keeping <laughs> fish in your mouth. Why does everybody do that? Yeah. I, want, I, I want understood fish. it with Whipper, but with you, it's a bit a bit gross. You tuck it in your lip like a dip. What's no, happening? No, I just swallowed it whole a little bit before for courage. Uh, this I anyway. Get it. Fish digestion. Courage fish. Courage oh. fish. She takes the dagger from you and like flinches say. when she grabs it and she's like Again, don't make me regret giving that to you. I don't want to find out you stabbed anybody, at least not in this town, with it. Wait, I'm not supposed to stab it? I thought don't make you regret it means I, I, should, I should go and stab someone. No, listen. Alright, I think maybe I should take it back. No, 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 no. She's like, just tell me. Just tell me. Just tell me. I think I can clear this up. And uh, <laughs> Moon Boy... Um, points to uh, his hip and he has this sword there and uh, he, it's, it's kind of this old sword in this leather scabbard and he's like, he's like I wear this everywhere I go but I rarely need to unsheath it sharpen this you won't ever have to use this. <laughs> I love it. And I'll if point to my sword. That, I unsheat this every single day, usually several times. <laughs> That's also an option. <laughs> and if you do that, maybe we'll come looking for you someday when we need help. And maybe you'll be the type of person that people give stuff to. I don't know. Knives. Just like Wind Rider just did. <laughs> Little Lucy, fish. She's a guy. Whatever you like. 
And Tree. What's your name? Tree's my name. So somewhere yeah. between somewhere between the moon and the wind. Got it. Sounds like a pretty cool name for an episode tree. <laughs> <laughs> and she looks at you like this. You know what? <laughs> I was wrong. You 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 two don't suck. I'm gonna go. And she she walks away. Um, oh boy. Just kidding. I'm just, just kidding. kidding. Wait, yeah, he fixed him. It's all right. She looks at you and, and flips uh, you off and farts and walks away. <laughs> <laughs> and Moon Boy uh, turns that to Windrider. That kid doesn't like, have a parent, clearly. That's kind of sad. <laughs> and he's like, I told you we didn't suck. <laughs> and, uh, starts walking back to the dinger. Cool. Yeah, yeah. same. Um, cool. Wonderful, very victorious trip. Uh, with that, we're going to cut over to Click and Kai. And I would love to know what you all are doing kind of like immediately leaving the scene of, of, of moon boy and flute heading off into the town and um yeah what are you all doing on, on this sh- docked magical ship of yours you you said you met the queen yes that's right i think i'm probably making click something to eat yeah we have firmly, uh, firmly established that there's a very robust kitchen in the back of the ship here, which is drawn on the map. Um, but so you all can kind of like be around this square table, um, prepping, you know, Kai, you're making some food and be hanging out in the late night kitchen. Yeah, I did. I, uh, I don't know if met is exactly the right word, but I did encounter her presence. And some of her machinations, I think. You encountered her as well? I... Not on purpose, really. I was looking for you, and she found me. Hmm. She she said that my planet is dying. My people are dying. I that Crean that I fought with earlier, he said the same. I I I I don't know what to do. Well, within the Devil's Machine, I encountered a number of presences and I encountered this undying queen and it seemed that they were trying to take energy from this planet in some fashion and there was some sort of interplanar transference going on from what I could tell I mean it was sort of like trying to read shadows. I didn't get an entirely clear picture of what was happening, but I was able to reroute some of the energies that were happening, so perhaps I've brought us some time. They must need this ionic energy. And before I I, I would swear that nothing can penetrate that their their defenses, but I... If they if they can't defend the the power source, then our way of life will die. My people will die. I, that's the psionic center. It's everything. It's what our whole lives were about. And if the undying queen gets a hold of it, that's. That's enough power for generations of Crean. That's... I don't know what she can do with it. I can't say I'm sure either. I don't know what she wanted it for, but... I think we were able to slow it down for a time, perhaps. But, I mean... I know that you have complicated feelings when it comes to your home and your people, but perhaps it's time to pay them a visit? 
I don't I don't know if I'm ready. I don't know if I'm I'm strong enough. I, I feel like I feel like the same Crean that left. That they sent away, that they banished. I I wasn't good enough. Hell, I'm 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 still using the same Githka as the day that they sent me away. And she kind of flips her uh, two-handed polearm off of her back and chucks it a couple of feet away from her. On on one side is a giant black crystal moon, and on the other side is a, a giant black crystal spike. I I just don't know if they'll have me. I don't know what they'll what they'd want with a coward. Sounds I, like they need you. Click, click, kind of pulls a, a gross pouch out of her out of her back pocket, and it's it's full of sort of this black mucusy substance. And you're like, I've been I've been saving this, and I I I've, I've been working on on my Githka. And I think I, I think I need your help. All right. Well, let's have a well, look, shall spit. we? Well, it's spit, and she and she offers up this sort of little little leather purse or pouch of of the of her black venom. And hmm. on our home planet, we'd mix it with sand and use it to form the crystals that. You, are on it now, but I just don't know if it's enough. Perhaps we could work on it together? I would be on it. Can I examine this, just the, the substance, the spit, a little bit, see what I can glean from it? <laughs> Oh yes, no, absolutely, absolutely. You can, um, you can do a. Uh, what check do you want to do? What are you trying to get from this? What are you trying to learn? If it could be, I want to sort of learn a little bit about its nature, so that we can move forward from there. Learn if it can be enhanced. Learn if it can be replicated, learn if it could be bolstered in some way. Just try to figure out the best way to help. Sure, absolutely. Um, you can either roll a arcana check as you are proficient enough in making magical items as you are a tinkerer to kind of just know materials and how they interact with other elements of the world, or you can roll a nature check for understanding just the kind of fundamental composition of this item. Could I use my alchemist's tools? A set of tools I don't believe I've ever used before on this program. I'm gonna bring myself back on the stream here just to give a big old absolutely hell yes you can use alchemist tools for the <laughs> weird bug spit. Yes. <laughs> sure. Yes. I'm just gonna, I sort you of should know a... more specifically it's venom. Okay. Yes. So yeah. it's spit, but it's 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 funnier to say spit, but it is it's green venom. Yeah, there is a bubble to it that is um kind of a a viscous. Yeah, and I have been slowly it. coagulating and collecting my own venom over the course of a number of months. Gross. And and you all yeah. heckled me for fleshy using the word fleshy a bunch. Um, mm. Coagulated venom, I think. All right, if I can say coagulating as much as you say fleshy, we'll have the okay. grossest D and D podcast. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to arc three, the grossest arc we've ever done. Um, <laughs> spit and farts. This is the game. Deal with it. <laughs> There's the episode title. Just spit and farts. Um, okay, Aaron, what did you get on that? I got a dirty twenty, but um, I use a flash of genius um, to make it a twenty-five. Uh, yeah, you have this just uh, near outer body experience, to, you know, like taking a whiff of this in, and you have the, the math problems moving around your head that is understanding that um, the elements that make up this liquid, and it is 
something that you know as a baker, as someone who uh, bakes, changes different materials into sweet treats. Uh, this could be baked um, into form a very hard material, a very like sturdy compound. Um, and but you also feel just like a twinge of otherworldly connection there. There's a bit of bleeding into the magical energy of that is just a little bit all around you all of the time. Um, that you know, Click is has psionic abilities, and that here she is. What she has collected is not just uh, this sappy venom um, that could be turned into a hard material, but it uh, also seems to hold some sort of psionic latency to it, some sort of sure. uh, energy that remains inside of it. Primo for crafting. You're just like, yes, this, this could yeah. be made into a physical item. So I think now that you kind of understand it, Click comes from a, a craftsman people, and she did, in fact, make this Gifka that she has. Right. So I... I Click will describe the process of how her people make their sort of sacred and very personal weapons. Um, it involves mixing like sand from their home planet and um, many, you know, um, long nights of sort of, of gathering, and it's all it's all sort of a, a ritualistic uh, thing for them, but. Uh, and it requires, so traditionally it requires 24 hours to just sort of set. They didn't really do anything extra to like, it's just more of a mix and a, and it, it forms into like a, you know, a crystal that they would shape. Um, and yeah, I will throw in Kai with your uh, 25 there. You know that um, one of the things about magical creation in this world is that that personal connection to it is important. Well, you know, as much yeah. as it is not tangible, it is connected to the magic. So it is uh, kind of like important that Click make it in a way that she wants to. Mm -hmm. It is a fascinating compound. It's not simply that it's excellent for crafting in its physical nature, but this material has a latent psychic resonance similar to the resonance of your own abilities that I'm guessing it compounds with the psychic resonances of the sand that you speak of from your home planet. It contains latent arcane resonances which could be quantified. Uh, planar resonances. Very interesting compound. I cannot recreate this but I can certainly help. Because it's your creation of the item that is almost as powerful as the material itself. It is intrinsic to the process. It must be you. It could not be done for you. Remarkable. I... I, ha I haven't made it anything in a long time. Well? <sighs> okay. What do you... You want to enhance the Githka? You want to make something new? What is it that you envision? So, I think it's definitely an, an, an enhancement. She's going to use the same the same pole arm in the in the center. It's just a matter of changing and sort of reshaping the um, the blades that are on it right now. Um, I uh, what I. I guess what, what Click will, will try to do is um, complete the, the there's a crescent moon on one end and make it just like a full disc, almost like a, like a fan. So mm -hmm. it's, it can be used sort of to waft air and force and also to like slice. So it's like you you've seen the these weapons that are like round on the top. So it's good for like less good for like hooking than it was before, but it's definitely like a slice on top. Yeah, so it's and a, then on the, it's a full on watermelon. The bottom, it's a full watermelon instead of just like the rind. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I picture like um 
Yeah, like the pole going all the way up through it, and then it has like a, like one of these, like a full circle in the middle, yes, and that's sure. it's all just sharp, on the outsides, for sort of slicing and dicing from from all sides, and then the other end is gonna keep is gonna keep a spike, but she's going to dangle like there's going to be, um, added, weights to it, to to help build up momentum. And I like some kind of, I like the idea of them being a little, a little loose, kind of like a flail, but it's mostly to build up speed when she's spinning it or uh, take, taking swings and stuff. So sure, you could trick people. yeah, um, and it, it makes it a little easier for her to add psionic like oomph to it if it has, you know, other stuff to, to grab onto. So I think so, I think that's the intention is to really try and make sure that this is a weapon that maximizes her you know burgeoning psionic abilities. Harlan, we bought this Kai bought this flame tongue mace with the hope of using it in some capacity to enhance another weapon. I would maybe like to try to figure out a way to use that in this process to see if we can turn this into like a flame tongue gifka Whoa. as well. Okay. Um, so I would, I think in the, in the, the sense of that this is a, um, in, the, in the same way that pottery is baked, you know, you are entering an oven situation with this, venom and creating these like new forged blades or something somewhere between a, a forge and an oven um right. that is and i absolutely canonically want to establish that this happens in the kitchen and, and not in the workshop here. <laughs> sure. um so kai i imagine that you are pulling up pans and stoking the oven here um yeah absolutely i'm doing and, I'm, I'm like kai's getting excited and making these weird alterations to the oven and tearing out parts of it and putting in <laughs> other parts and pumping in air and sort of going on and on and explaining by by incorporating a, a high degree of heat extremely high degree of heat to this substance we could alter it in a way that uh, has goat, never been done goat opens the door to the kitchen the big girl I, uh um Goliath Boson, and she's in pajamas. She has like a small hat on that you've never seen her in before that she clearly got here on this uh, town. But she opens the door and sees you like building this oven and like parts strewn everywhere and she just closes the door back and walks away. Um, and uh, Aaron, I would like to have you roll a Tinker's Tools check here and uh, for you to set up the scene for click to roll inside of and depending on how high or low you roll we'll set the dc for click here sure. and um rachel mm -hmm. i would like to have you roll um you can roll one of two things you can roll a history check or um you can roll a uh dexterity check oh dex it will be <laughs> Okay. Yeah. Um, with the Tinker's Tools, that's going to be a big old 30. Jesus, Ooh. what the hell did you roll? <laughs> 17 plus 13. On Aaron's oh. dice, there's a 25. Did you all yeah. like that? Yeah. <laughs> Aaron yeah. rolls percentile dice for checks. <laughs> yeah. I, I, ho I wish that like we were famous enough to have someone who keeps track of the stats just so I c there could just be a... Like a video of me reacting to the insane amount of high rolls that you are. Oh, ah, 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 yeah. Don't worry, there's a picture of me in the attic getting more and more decrepit <laughs> with every excellent roll that I have. And Very an Aaron in a mirror universe that just constantly dying in these games. Yeah. <laughs> crit fail after crit fail. Yeah. We're actually announcing that stream next month, so. Um, yeah. so uh, Rachel is very low. Uh, the DC is very low. It's five. Um, well, I rolled as close as I have gotten to a natural 20 well, in months. What did you get? And that is a 19. So it's going yes. to be a 23 for my dex yes. check. 
Rachel, do you roll the demons out of your dice? I uh, they every live game? in there. Uh, <laughs> you know what? You? I I roll regular numbers so y'all can. <laughs> it's great. That's what it's what you want from your fighter. Yeah. I seriously <laughs> roll my digital dice before we start, and I scream, I yell at the screen, and I try to get all of the the nasty ones out. <laughs> That's uh, next month. We're not going to commission any art. We're just going to pay for a seance for Rachel's dice. Well, yeah, um, we need them. <laughs> an, ec- an exorcism. Yeah. Um, so this uh, Kai stands in front of this majestic oven that is like was just a normal like brick oven put in here before, and then all of a sudden it's just like beautifully billowing flames in a way that is like comforting and cool and not uh, horrifying for a wooden ship. Um, and you just see Kai kind of like sweaty and standing in front of it, like clearly victorious. Whoa, sweaty robot. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I saw Aaron react yes. and I was like, what? I'm sorry that I made you. Oh no, no, I see robots don't sweat. Um, yes, they do. <laughs> they sweat robot sauce. That's how hot this fire is. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, the steam is just, uh, like you're like a fogged up mirror. Yeah. Um, and <laughs> Click, it's almost, um... He's just excited. You feel like an outer body experience, as if, uh... You've done this before, but, uh... Hundreds of times, but you know you've only done it once or twice in your life. But it, it is similar to, um... The feeling you felt when going into halls of, like, powerful psionic creatures in the community that you are from. You feel just, like, this connection... The psionic connection to uh, a version of life that is bigger than your own experience of it because you just know how to do these things and um and you can kind of like hear people you've you've come up around you grew up around like all of a sudden you remember these all these tiny bits of information that you told to you to get this exactly right to kind of get the pain uh, the, the venom in the pan so cleanly set it out and uh and then slip it in and exactly how much time to take it's just like all of these memories are coming back to you in this moment um and just throw away lines from many people that you know and uh it is you feel the sun cresting a little bit as you all are hanging out in the kitchen and kind of like have a little uh, can the timer be Bessner, Aaron? Can that be it? Can your old <laughs> yeah, mechanical absolutely. familiar absolutely. be a timer? Great, thank you. Um, as Bessner dings um, and flutters about the room and um, you pull out this uh, these two pieces of what seem to be metal or stone. They have a shimmer to it. It looks like it's a precious metal, but it is uh, almost translucent like a stone. And it is, um, although there's maybe a version of this that looks more fragile than steel, you immediately know it is not. Uh, It is a very firm, hard rock that is some sort of um, more distilled blade than you had before. And you're able to attach it to the same pole. It is just like, uh, an unweaving and then a reweaving of this material that hardens quickly as you add the blade on and you stand there in front of Kai with this uh, just a, a bit taller but definitely more menacing blade and on the bottom side you can see Kai a little flicker of um, fire kind of like in that point there and on the but on the top you see a flicker of purple uh, that almost flickers in tandem with uh, Click's antennae, her big feathery antennae that sit on top of her head. And um, Rachel, you have a uh, I, I realize I didn't name it, and I think I'm just going to call it the Githka of Click uh, now. <laughs> it's a Click 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 Wow. A click of Much the... easier to say. Great. So does it does it have the properties of the flame tongue mace? Do we do that? I will tell you exactly um, what the properties are here. Uh, if you cast the identify spell, which I you know sure, I will. Let's take a look at. We've created something new. Um, <laughs> and you know, I'm just gonna I'm gonna read straight from the stat block here. Um. Rachel, with your bonus action, 
once per day. Um, and don't worry, I'll send this to you afterwards. But um, right. once per day, when you use your bonus action to attack, when you use the bottom side of your weapon, um, mm -hmm. you can add 2d6 in flame damage to it. Whoa. Whoa. Um, one time per day. Uh, when you take a long rest, it regenerates. Um, mm -hmm. You don't need to take a long... If you, you know. If we don't have to get into it. But... Um, <laughs> With the top part here, this this big fan-like blade, um, I'm going to read off the rule to it, uh, but I would love to hear your interpretation of this. Um, Rachel doesn't know about this, and I'm very excited to reveal it. When you attack a creature with this magical weapon and roll a 20 on the attack roll, in addition to suffering the attack's normal effects, that target takes an extra 3d8 psychic damage, and the creature must make a wisdom saving throw. If the target fails, your weapon pierces both body and mind, and the target has disadvantage on attack rolls and ability checks, and can take react and can't take reactions until the end of its next turn. Wow! So crazy. Um, <laughs> you now have, um, in addition to your weapon now doing one d8 damage for each hit instead of one d6, as is an upgraded weapon, uh, because of the both successful rolls, you get the flame da uh, tongue dagger. Uh, effect here for the bonus action and if you crit you get a big old boost um yeah. to what you do to the target so um would, so yeah if you would love to i would love to hear a little bit of flavor from you rachel about how um because this is a it does psychic damage and it uh, i, I want to read the line again and if the target fails your body pierces both body and mind so what do you feel click here in this moment as you mm -hmm. pull this weapon and like connected together so i i you mentioned the flash of purple and the flash of orange i'm picturing it with with actual like i don't know stones in them or something that are sort of denote that but she sort of takes it in its full form with a with a pole that she's like she's so familiar with like she knows the handle so, so well and so, and greets it like like a friend you haven't really seen in a while and a lot's happened since then you know you like you see someone after the pandemic and you're like yeah <laughs> we're here now um <laughs> ow and she feels sort of this surge of of familiarity and strength and knowing that like this is a thing that she forged with a friend i think i think this just confirms that it's like i've grown and we've grown and we can take on whatever comes mm. absolutely hell yeah um so kai you see click just kind of after going on a um you know telling you that she might not feel worthy to go home. She, um, you see her Stanley pr standing proud in front of you, and um, Cobble opens a cabinet in the kitchen, again, like <laughs> rubbing sleep from her eyes. She's like, Does this mean we're going to Click's ha home planet? Are we, going, are we going back there? Or are we, uh, we doing other things? Mm. Click looks at Kai and says, I've got to go home. Great, says Cobble, and she shuts the door to the cabinet. Um, <laughs> um, great, I think I want to leave that particular discussion for next episode. Um, but I, uh, is it safe to say that we're all ready to enter a long rest kind of like after this moment as Click and Kai got a, a, lay with, a little bit extra because they do not need to fully sleep? Um, I think just as that moment happens, they hear kind of a clatter up above, and it is clear that the Moon Boy and Wind Rider have returned at least a little drunk. A lot of, <laughs> a lot of snicker, a lot of snickering. That was totally. Shh, 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 quiet. Just saying, it would be funny if it was called the Cave of Scones, <laughs> and then there's no scones here. <laughs> Come on. Um. Wonderful, wonderful. Okay, cool. So you can all enter into this 
uh, the room that is all of y'all's bedroom, this um, room full of hammocks uh, that you kind of like crash into, and the way that my roommates and I would both come home drunkenly at 3 a.m., all holding different bags of fast food and run into each other at the same time. This is a similar moment of like you all kind of going back from the kitchen and this drunken crew like heading back to the hammock room. And um, are we are we cool to take a long rest? Long rest it. Oh, cool. It's, it's there was something rest. I wanted to do in, in the long rest. Should I wait for next sesh? Um, no, give it to us. Okay. Um, yeah, I take I take the long long rest, you know, t- uh, but a lot of tossing and turning and. Um, not even not so much having bad dreams but i having uh like i don't know how thoroughly moon boy is sleeping but almost like a a conversation with myself and in the pre-dawn hours i i i wake up and i and i can't sleep and i'm kind of very troubled by um the events that happened down in that hellmouth where i was I'd been receiving mysterious notes uh, as if from myself, but not from myself. I didn't even have paper or writing implements. And then I was able to communicate directly with someone on the other end of those notes, uh, confirming that I wasn't crazy, that something was answering uh, those notes. And we were just, you know, immediately afterward, just having fun, just partying and and drinking. But now in these pre-dawn hours, very worried about it and so I um, a few days ago when we were in a fight I got hit by a hypnotic pattern spell that uh, you know immobilized me but it also cast my mind back and sort of like opened it up uh, to events in the past so I'm going to sit with my back in the wall here in our little room that I share with Moonboy and I cast hypnotic pattern on myself and I sit there uh, up against the wall um, with my one eye kind of rolled up in my head uh, among this sort of um, shifting hypnotic uh, uh, shapes and if Moonboy uh, was awake he would hear he would hear it's kind of like a mumbled conversation um, kind of under my breath, but it uh, it kind of it's it almost sounds like the Wind Rider, like kind of sternly lecturing someone, but not in common. Well, not in the common tongue. Um, the Moon Boy is not awake. To okay, this. cool. Yeah, we got pretty we got pretty. Moon hammered, Boy so. seems to <laughs> truly that, but even more so, he seems to be in a in a, a very. You notice that he too seems to be grappling with his own uh, night terror. He's kind of uh, breathing pretty pretty deeply and kind of sweating a little bit. Maybe it's this plant that he drew, but or that he drank, but mm. this night the, uh, the moon boy dreams of plants growing forever. It's wonderful flavor from sleeping from both of you all. I love the idea that Click and Kai don't sleep, so they both just see these like twitching, weird ass creatures, and are just like, "What is happening?" <laughs> yeah. Oh, are they in the room? I I figured they were up yeah. on deck. Yeah, they we're never usually come upstairs. Down. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Wind uh, Riders doing late night psychedelic regression therapy again. <laughs> <laughs> just walking by with a glass of milk. Uh, so wait, I still is, or is, uh, Click is door. deeply unsettled by the sleep room. It's yeah. haunting. Uh, <laughs> yeah. so I don't think she goes in there ever. <laughs> oh, we've never talked about that, but I, I love I to establish this in case like, it feels like oh, yeah. a death room to her. It would nah, be so weird. creepy. It's where all uh, my friends go to die every night? No. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> no. Um, I they love it. roll up into little pods and they come out in the morning fresh as a daisy. Nope. Just lie there? I love it so much. Yeah, oh that is God. 100% is... what that would be like. Holy shit. <laughs> I was literally thinking about this as I was falling asleep like this weekend. I was like, man, it, radio, click is right. Like, sleep is weird. I was, that's so good. Um, and you just lie there? For how long? As long as it takes, click. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to talk about it. Um, takes yes, I have to my do headphones. What? Yeah. <laughs> Look at. <laughs> forget, forget. She should quiet the voice yeah. here. Um, 
So just a, a mechanical question before we get out of here. Flute, are you taking a long rest or are you staying up? Uh, I figured I could take a long rest of six hours of sleep, right? Yeah. I figured this is like in the in the pre-dawn. I was thinking it would be a long rest, and then I and then I do this. Okay, great. Um, so if are that's you... if that's possible, if it's not, then then that's cool too. Oh, I, I'm I'm, d I'm down for it. Um, do are you trying to accomplish anything specific by casting this spell on yourself? Uh, it's yes. like it's flute. Like this is just you and me. Hold on. In fact, I will say, I'm gonna switch over so it's just you and me on screen here. Um. <laughs> What? Private time. Yeah, <laughs> just me and flute doing psychedelics. Uh, what <laughs> are what is flute searching for as he kind of charms himself here? Uh, he's kind of like he has these like murky bits of of memory and things that he uh you know can't quite figure out and he and he can't remember and you know with the mystery of those notes that he was receiving. And he's basically using the hypnotic pattern to try to just like unfold his mind and uh, both um, uh, look, you know, kind of like look at at the past events that led up to this, but also, if possible, to just directly communicate with this entity that has been writing him notes. About halfway through this conversation, I realized I get to do something that I've never done before, and I'm... Well, maybe we've done it, but either way, I'm excited. Roll an insight check on yourself. Oh, cool. Okay. Uh, a 14. Um... You see a pattern as you throw up this spell hypnotic pattern throughout your life where, you know, you've gone to bard college and kind of like shirked it or like changed it to be, you know, like you wanted to be a pirate but didn't want to follow your own path. And as you're kind of like casting this spell on yourself and then transitioning into sleep, you feel so certain and sure that it is the emptiness you have felt so far in your life the lack of connection with these different vocations has just been an open space for what is now there um this connection with this voice this otherworldly power that as you cast hypnotic pattern you see yourself uh but shattering this ice cube that you are held in, which feels like every person who has made a slight at your dress or your abilities, every pressure that you have felt, um, you just feel it cracking and breaking around you. And you hear a voice come from this hypnotic pattern that you cast and it says, hello, flute. The rider is here for you. You are the rider. And together we're going to do great things. Cool. Can I can I chat with it like through the the evening? Uh, yes. Or... Except first, before you do that, I need you to make a saving throw. And. Uh, I will tell you what the saving throw is. It's a very fun thing for me, because if you're going to stay up all night here, I would have had Moonboy make this saving throw, but instead, you are going to make this saving throw. Um, so if you could roll a d20 and add one of your modifiers to it, that I will tell you, and it's, uh, it's a wisdom saving throw. So. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Oh, boy. Uh, that'd be a three, all told. Um, it, right as you hear this voice, it seems to be sucked away from you. Like It's just like an echo, a delay pedal of just this, like, we're going to do great things. And it's just, like, it's pulled away. And the hypnotic pattern um, that it was this, like, comforting delve into yourself, uh, all of a sudden you can see the whole room that you're in. 
and you can see the the colors of the hypnotic pattern seem to still be there, except you are sitting next to yourself. And you look over it, and it looks at you and says, Flute. Yeah, yes? You need help. You need someone to help you. And your head starts to split open uh, of this version of yourself sitting next to you. And you see, if you want to open your roll 20, I'm going to throw it on screen, what you oh, see I here, don't too. I want to see. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Could I also not see? No. Uh, in fact, you very specifically, <gasps> deeply cannot not see here. Um, <laughs> as you see, out of your head bursts this large eye, um, kind of with this like green reptilian uh, edge to it. And it you hear a voice that sounds familiar to you, and you hear someone say, Where are you? I've been looking for you for so long. Seven days, in fact. You were supposed to come to my house. But you didn't, and now I have to burst you apart in your head. And I don't like doing- well, I do like doing that, but... You're avoiding me, Flute. You're avoiding Powerface. And do I, I don't. Okay. Yeah. I yeah. The <laughs> Absolutely. Immediately. Okay. Um, no. No. We just. We just got. We just got side sidetracked. Is all. Well, he says. Now I'm sidetracked from everything else in my life except for fixating on the fact that you're not here. So. We'll, we'll be there. We'll, we'll, we just we just finished up. We just finished up our business and then we were gonna head head over there. Okay. That's fine, but until then, you don't get to sleep. And it blinks and just dissipates away and all the color goes away. And you realize that it is the morning and you do not get to take a long rest. Um, <laughs> you do not heal any hit points and you do not get any spell slots back. Um, and oh. in fact, uh, you well. take some damage as well. Oh! Um, is I'm going to roll 3d6 here for the very last moment of our stream. I'm going to roll 3d6. And you take... Shit, I don't know what spells I'd use. Ooh, you take 13 points of psychic damage. Um, Oof. And if you're not sure... Uh, Andrew, because I kind of did a, a weird tricky thing where I had you level up before you took a long rest and then I did this to you. Um, you can just cut your oh. spell slots in half, um, taking the highest one, at least. Yeah, I think I I think I remember. Um, so, yeah. uh, cool, all right. 13 points of psychic damage. Um, you do not get the effects of a long rest. And uh, you see the dawn come. Um, you hear Goat shuffling about, um, actually not shuffling, moving quite intently and quickly as she is starting the morning early, the first one of the crew up, kind of like preparing the ship to go as she expects to leave here, this place, um, in this next morning. And um, we will pick it up next week at the start Oof. of this next day uh, with a very hungover town, a very wounded flute, and a level nine party. Or Crazy. And for those of you who don't know, Powerface was an eye tyrant who we briefly chatted with who wants bit us to a, come work for him. A yeah. bit of a job of the hut figure. Yeah. Bit of a yeah. local He did promise us our own tough. planet if we do yeah. this job, so But there is a carrot at the other end of the huge well, stick. Now yes. we need to fix flute, so <laughs> <laughs> I think I guess we're going right to him. Um, oh fuck. boy! Yeah. So, um, what a jerk! Ugh, that was crazy. So close. You that made contact. So yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, Moonboy, I believe you made a saving throw in your dream at one point too. Um, I certainly did. I certainly did. Yes. So yeah, I think it is an important piece that I I rolled over. If you are new to this, that there is a uh, you all spoke in a in a to a beholder creature um, that is claims to be the ruler of the farthest planet of this solar system 
uh, called Hakatha that uh, has requested your presence seven days ago, and it has been seven days. So we are um, doing stuff. Yeah, I wanted to go to Click's planet. Oh, it's hey, a jerk. Yeah. It does We're already it, here too. It doesn't mean. Yeah, I will say Click's planet is much closer than Powerface's planet. Uh, <laughs> this is not me as the DM saying you have to do this. This is the <laughs> I tyrant Powerface saying, "Where are you at?" Um, uh, can we get embroiled in another? I mean, we can't charge into a battle with an undying queen with a bard who can't sleep, right? <laughs> That's true. That's true. Unless... Hmm. Does Greta Restoration do anything for insomnia? I don't um, know. We could try it on Melzor. <laughs> cool. All right. Well, ne- tomorrow, uh, oh, next boy. session you will have to um, choose between <sighs> dealing with the, the ticking clock of a, an eye tyrant or the qu- ticking clock of a home planet that is uh, seemingly being torn apart. So uh, oh. welcome to Better Than Heroes, everyone. I hope you're having a wonderful time. Arc 3! Great. Okay. Well, uh, I guess Sorry, go ahead. Do we need to shout anything out before uh, the end of this stream? Shout out. We're doing additional oh, yeah. streams this month oh, in yeah. July. We're streaming my game, Duster. Uh, we've got okay. two games. They're both two parters. Uh, the first one starts this Thursday. So this Thursday, 8 p.m. Mountain Time, we're starting a, a two-part adventure. It's set in a post-apocalyptic sort of gas punk western world. Uh, it's gonna be a lot of fun. We've got Aaron Uris, Jordan Dahl, Liza Skinner, Ross Bryant. Uh, it's gonna be fun. And then the 22nd and 29th, there'll be a the second game, which is also a two-parter with a different game master, a different uh, cast. So that's gonna be a bunch of fun. Uh, we'll we'll be plugging that. But if you want more info uh, on the game or any of that, uh, just go to my site, occupiedhex.com. You can get on the mailing list. Whatever you want to do. Um, yeah, so I'm looking forward to that. Heck yeah. And Harlan has made some very cool assets for it. Ooh. Yeah. Do you want me so. to play one after the credits tonight? I'll do it. Yeah. Okay. Hey, I'm, uh, I'm not going to put it up on the YouTube, so it's going to be hidden away. But uh, right. if you all hang out after the credits, <laughs> I will I will play one of them that I love. Cool. Yeah, that's all I had. Shout out um, Big Top. Big Top? Yeah. Uh, Big Top. Shout out to Jason Wardell, who is oh. playing some sweet music what? today. Live Just soundtracking out of the park. every episode. Mm-hmm. I, I feel like I and say this about Joshua Smith's maps, Jordan's uh, character art, and Joshua Smith. Every week, it just blows me out of the water. Every time they send me something new or do something new, I'm like, how is this getting better? <laughs> like, it's just already so good. So, shout out to all three yeah. of you. Um, yeah. Wait, before we're out of here, real quick. And thank you. Jordan, can I... Do you care if I show the the art that you did? Show um, the new moon boy! I want to see it. you got to put it in, Ooh, in both winnings. Yeah. I sure will. You I've done it. an updated art for the moon boy. I was going to release it tomorrow anyway, so we might as well uh, show the people. Yeah, it's uh, we're updating all the character art because everyone has changed so much in, in wonderful, beautiful ways, but I'll throw this yes, on screen yes. real quick. And then I will throw it on our Roll20 as well so you all can see it. But, oh my goodness, Jordan, you have just really, uh... Oh my god. Oh, it's my precious moon boy! I love it so much. Oh, I love it! He's got the shoes, the moon. Of course. Love it. Uh, Those eyes. It's so good. It's gotta be the shoes. That's cute. It's so good! Um, I'm very proud of my sweet moon boy. You should be. And we will have updated art for all of the characters. Uh, except for flute, because you already got one. Yeah, yeah I got the, the the one of me jumping, so great. Yeah, you look very cool. Um, okay, cool. Jason uh, Mordell, Case Dreary, everybody, thank you all for hanging out with us for uh, like oh, almost 60 episodes. You're great. And yeah. we'll we see love you. Ne- we'll see you next week. Quick plug for my cat who's running away. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. oh, man, the That's real silly. star of the show. Okay. See Scully, we're a wonderful the cat's cat. We have to go out. All right, bye everybody. See you next week. See ya. Stargazer, Moon Boy, Click, The Crusher, Kai, Amelia, Chef, and the Wind Rider, Flute.
swim teaser. They're better than heroes. <laughs>